Okay, universe. I know the way this one ended. It's going to be the most downloaded episode out of the 322 that now exist. And since you've already seen the title, you already know what I'm talking about. You're the one who's creating the scenario that is uh, engorging the situation to a proportion it doesn't deserve. Because, as you'll note, throughout listening to anything previous to that, this episode is terrible. So, I'm giving you some air here. You should go clean that kitchen trash can immediately. Hang this shit up. This ain't worth your time today. It wasn't even worth my time. And here I am prefacing it to make sure that you know this. This is a gift. What you choose to do with it is up to you. Heidi ho Well, no, not Heidi ho We're not in any kind of Heidi ho mood, are we? It's been... Well, Phoebe's asleep, so that's good. But she took a pretty uh, significant turn for the worse about uh, 42 hours ago. And uh, we have kind of been adjusting to that since. Now, I don't know if she's day-to-day yet, but the turn for the worse has made her almost immobile. And while she can barely get around, if I help her get up off her lie-down self, um, she can't go further than from the bedroom to the kitchen. And even then, she's going to lie down by the time she gets to the kitchen. She just doesn't, there's, there's not much left. She's still very upbeat. She still eats everything I put in front of her. She is drinking water uh, gluttonously and now sleeping peacefully. So I didn't get a chance to record yesterday because I decided I was going to do everything I could to make sure that day was all for Phoebe. So we did all kinds of stuff yesterday and we had a lot of fun. But considering we can only uh, be so mobile... Well, uh, she has had quite a, a smorgasbord of meats in the last, uh, what, 16 hours since we got her a steak and that was a ribeye. Then we got uh, some lamb chops and whatever that thing is uh, with the bone in it. So, oh, and bacon. So, I mean, if you're a dog who can barely get through the house... At least you deserve to be eating some bacon. Pause. Well, I was attempting to record in the living room to give myself some variety, especially since it's a pretty nice day today, or it's turned into one. Um, but I do believe the acoustics in here are going to be rather uh, challenging compared to the uh, carpet and environment of plush comfort that is the bedroom. There's a whole lot more hard surfaces out here. So uh, we're at 220 in the recording here. I'm about to do a dab, and frankly, who gives a shit what that sounds like? Um, and so I will pause the recording there and listen to see if it's listenable. If not, after that, we'll be in the bedroom. Until then, um, what yesterday really reinforced is there are, there are times when you're just going to be called into action by the universe to uh, fill a role for whatever purpose. And um, helping my dog reestablish her mobility Saturday night into Sunday morning, now into Monday. Um, well, it's been, <laughs> you know, the emotional uh, roller coaster of every, um, every moment as meaningful as uh, you can make it while still not succumbing to the sadness that's inevitable. So, <clears throat> having uh, been through quite the, um, hmm, uh, the, uh, uh, the filthy side of, um, of losing your mobility, we are uh, also glad to have uh, basically given her a full trim. I mean, she knew she had uh, the need for help and has been extremely accommodating and looks great, except for the tumors. I mean, honestly, and is clean. I mean, oh, she's so pretty. I will say this about Labradoodles. If you're going to get a Labradoodle, you have to 
brush its undercoat at its skin level daily. You have to be able to run your hand through their coat freely. There can be no snag, no friction, nothing. Because every moment of tension that winds into their coat creates another vine that's going to tangle. So once it starts, it's entirely across their body, only worsening by day by day. If you don't counteract that with daily brushing, they become so uncomfortable, they can barely uh, stand the motion of friction created in moving around. Their coats are that entangled. They are, there is, in, in my opinion, there is an argument to be made that a dog breed that if left to monthly brushing rather than daily brushing is living a life of, of pain and uh, intolerance across its entire skin from the uh, coat that it's entangled in. I don't know, man. That's not nature at its best. I know that. And while the tumor has made grooming her a challenge for five years now, um, you know, uh, daily brushing she gets no matter what. It's just what she deserves, frankly. And what you may deserve is a new venue. So I'm going to go check that out. Could be enjoying my living room view of people going through the neighborhood on a Monday evening. Or I could be locked in my bedroom by myself with my dog and my cat like a weird old man. Where will we be? You shall see. Um, <clears throat> well, was it unlistenable? No. Was it worse in the bedroom? Probably. But having uh, already analyzed a couple of improvements I can make in real time, um, including one that uh, hopefully made this next uh, 20 seconds more listenable than the first six minutes, but frankly, the first six minutes were listenable. So being a very low bar uh, clearing uh, production, <clears throat> well, you get what you pay for, eh? Um, the day that was yesterday called into a role to fulfill purpose for my dog um, is hmm, is an experience I um, am unfortunately very um, unfamiliar with. In other words, Rarely does the universe have need to call me into action in a role of support or in any other form of care for another. Occasionally, yes, it has happened. Right guy, right time. Wrong guy, wrong time. Whatever. Um, hell, you could actually say six years with Lily was a bit of that. But I'm... I'm rarely constricted to a role of I can't leave because this purpose here is the most important thing I can be doing with my life right now. And even if that just means I'm here in case I'm needed, I need to be, and I will be, and I am. Now, um, I think... <laughs> I, my the oh man, the age of development from let's say ten twelve to driving happens, or at least for the two kids across the street, happened in a in an instant. They're all of a sudden driving, and now they the one of them the sister has a boyfriend for sure. I think the brother has a girlfriend, but they totally make out in the front yard hiding behind the trees. Both of them like it's hilarious. I. I have such an entertaining block of, of character watching. It's just a tranquil little home of perfectness for me and my dog and somewhat my cat. But <clears throat> because my life is this simple, the ability to fill the role of someone in need 
is always there. In fact, is something that now needs to be uh, um, boy, am I struggling to get words right now. I haven't slept, so I'm a little intellectually uh, waning. But if I'm not willing to create the instances uh, myself and um, find places in which I can uh, be in that role of support or, you know, fulfill whatever need, doesn't matter. And then uh, as you show yourself capable of delivering on that impulse and energy and seeing it all the way through, well, then the universe starts to put you in positions where those actions are truly needed. So that's plan. Get my soul straight. And plan, get my current, um, what would this be? My immediate um, day-to-day straight is has turned full-time now into pursuing stand-up comedy. I have geeked out for a week, maybe two, on just writing jokes and crafting the triggers that make people laugh. And honestly, I'm enjoying the fuck out of it. I mean, this is the kind of thing that I never... I always wanted to have the motivation to believe I would get dedicated like this, but I might have sat down for an afternoon and written down some funny shit that I had been thinking, but I didn't do it again the next day, the next day, and the next day. So to have had this much enjoyment out of nowhere. Like, to me, this is something I always should have enjoyed, but could never find enjoyment in its execution. So over the course of 30 years of thinking about, can I actually go up and stand on a stage and make people laugh? Well, the motivation was uh, never anything but dissolving. And to see it robustly engaged. Again, sometimes it feels like life is happening and I'm just participating. <clears throat> Even this last joke I wrote, what is it, like 15 lines? It's fucking hilarious. And it circles back perfectly on itself. The ending didn't come to me until I had written the last sentence. It, I was still... Con- in some way, I was constructing the set up to re-deliver the ending to itself, to the beginning, without even knowing I was doing it until it happened. <laughs> and it's pretty clever. Like, it's the kind of thought that you think, I couldn't have just had that bucketed away, ready to emerge in real time, so did it all just synergize with that sentence's timing perfectly? I don't know. And I know this is the kind of thought that, while I could spend a decade consumed with, a lot of people think it's just a fucking waste of time. What are, you even, what are you doing? You're sitting in your living room writing jokes that you'll probably only tell to your dog and your cat instead of doing the yard work that as you look out your front yard, you can see dire need. What kind of life are you leading? Well, one, I already have done two hours of yard work today. So I figure if I put in two hours, my guilt consciousness gets to shut the fuck up till tomorrow at least. So no harm, no foul there. Two, the whole point of this connectivity moment was me and the dog. Given that she has finally petered out, well... What an opportunity to take advantage and say hello to the universe that I, frankly, was too busy to care about yesterday. Um, And even though I'm working on, how long have I been up? Fuck, I've been up maybe 60 hours. The last time I woke up was Saturday morning. I have been up since. That sucks. 
But having gotten to this point, I'm now in the adrenaline mode. Like I did two hours of yard work the last two hours before I came back in here. In other words, I could right now go do another two hours of yard work without pause. But then at some point, I'm literally going to fall asleep standing up. And wherever that happens, I just hope it's in a position where I can't be compromised. Um, <clears throat> and having endured what both of us have been through for two days now, uh, we're both ready to fall asleep. Trust me, this isn't going to go on much longer. But I wanted to capture, A, my enthusiasm for a project that's always been somewhat drudgery, and B, because yesterday was all about just taking care of the dog, thinking about things that are funny, and working my way through the trails in between, I kept asking myself, what, what would you say is the most fulfilling life available? What is it? If you were to lead the life that you would consider your ultimate fulfillment, would it engage in a reality such as this? Like, would you be a revolutionary thinker who pulls the shackles of capitalism off our governmental system, freeing a monetary system that's so broken it's only waiting to explode into a land of opportunity and prosperity for all? I mean, that seems like a life you might look back on with a consideration that you'd done what you came to do. Fulfillment and destiny had met with a purpose that moved humanity forward, and you're the catalyst equals fulfillment of life. Uh, you know, for <clears throat> napkin uh, penciled uh, philosophy of could I be fulfilled in that role? Well, of course. Okay, right? But then, <clears throat> what if achieving all that, your life was um, a constant battle against voluminous diarrhea? It just is a condition that you manage. Would you want to come back and relive that life? It, it, okay, admittedly, I'm exhausted, stoned, emotionally uh, cathartic in a way that only my dog can, uh, can engage me. And so my mind has basically trapeze artists in it right now, just flip-flopping and trying to bounce off nets in a way that is graceful because nobody can hold on to the bar. Everybody's falling. It's all just clumsy. So I apologize for all that right now, but let's see if I can just finish this thought. Cause it was enough of a deviation from comedy that it, it consumed my, my at least what else is out there that would be considered fulfilling. And the destiny that I end up with, no matter how I break it down, is the most fulfilling life available is the one lived with the most fulfilling community you can build or participate within. It really has nothing to do with swimming with sharks. I mean... Don't get me wrong, I think you definitely need adventure in your life. You can't just sit on the mounds of Ohio and wait for the giants to come home and tell you all the secrets of the universe. You gotta go at least see some of this planet. That's part of the engagement. But to, <clears throat> to fully hmm, 
have a life that literally is the most purposeful, destiny-oriented. I don't want to change anything about the way this one went. Trip. Well, I don't even know if I can finish a sentence right now, let alone finish a thought. It seems to me that as I am being thrust back into the community in a way that I am seriously looking forward to, the internal mechanisms of my brain, the emotional swelling of my heart, and the playful, analytical side of my existence are converging in what has felt like I'm already programmed to go through this. It's so familiar to me, it's as if I'm just revisiting a part I played 20 years ago and know exactly what maneuvers are going to work. So, having <laughs> thrown this hubris in front of a true professional in a way that honestly was fucking firecracky, um, <sighs> well, I know that the longer I stay awake without... Uh, thinking I'm making errors that I'm not aware of, the more trouble I'm creating for myself whenever I end up waking up from these delusional 48, 56, 75 hour runs of no sleep. But I still have all this adrenaline. So should I work out and thus exhaust myself fully, potentially falling asleep on my weight bench as I've done before? Should I go finish what's in the front yard? Or should I play some theater of magic pinball? Wow, well, fuck, now I can't play pinball. I mean, it's digital pinball anyway, so does that even count? It shouldn't. Pinball is a sport. Well, is it a sport as much as golf? Almost. If it were played outside and you had to wear, um, well, what would you have to wear to play pinball? Oh. There could be, do they, do they wear wrists? Oh, I, I, I bet there is some geeky ass shit that people who play pinball professionally wear. So I'm not harsh on you. Good on you. Same thing can be said about golf. Golf is a weird sport. And George Carlin said it best. So I'm not even going to try to go there. Just if, oh, I didn't even think about that. If my life were nothing, but playing rounds of golf. How content could I be? <laughs> wow. Would I even need to masturbate? Probably not.